Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 12. What I was trying to do here is make the lightest panel I could make out of things I had on hand just to see how it would work and see how well the prepreg would be bonded to the honeycomb without any glue film. So I started out with um, this is a probably out of date offcut of uh, Hexel 2x2 two two twill, it's a quarter gram, and it's probably about 45% resin content. Um, it's been in a bag in a freezer for a while and still got plenty of tack, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm working in a pretty cold area, and it's uh, taken a bit to get the material to stick down to the Teflon. I'll give it a quick debulk. And I'm using these latex gloves, which I happen to grab, but they've got powder on them. pre preg normally you'd want to use something that didn't have the risk of transfer and I was less likely to tear. But for now, it's better than no gloves at all. So I'm going to squish this down. Try to make sure I'm not baking in any wrinkles in the laminate and um, just give it a minute, come back, make sure that first ply is stuck down. Well, that only ply on the first skin. And um, in most cases, you would apply a film adhesive or glue film. So this is almost four millimeter Aramid Nomex honeycomb. It's pretty fuzzy, it hasn't been sanded, um, so it's going to suck up quite a bit of resin. I'm putting these pieces of Corsell off cut around the edges just to make sure that the honeycomb doesn't get crushed in and also leaving that bottom skin wide so that when it comes time to demold I'm not going to put unnecessary pressure um, on the edge of the honeycomb it'll be less likely to delaminate since I'm guessing this will be uh, not the most robust thing ever. Um, just trying to see if it's possible to get something usable without providing any additional resin to bond that honeycomb. Just stealing resin out of the 45% um, or so that's in the in the carbon prepreg. And so I'm give this a quick debulk just to make sure that the whole thing stuck together before I apply the bag stack. And I'm using here a product that I had on hand from something a long time ago. It's called Daltex. I'm not sure if it's available anymore. It's a lot like Gore-Tex. It's a membrane that allows moisture um, or resin not to go through, but it allows air through. Um, and it's not going to bleed off any of the resin here. So it will, I'm, in theory, um, leave a peel ply-ish surface that may or may not be contaminated. Normally this would be used with a peel ply, like a pre preg peel ply. Again, this is a product that I haven't seen for sale in 10 years. I'm not sure if it's available or what it's called or who makes it, but it is a Gore-Tex-like membrane um, that is, I think, typically used for infusion. It works really well for this though. Because there are no features to this bag to speak of, I'm just putting the bag right on the sealant tape. There may be one or two little tiny pleats, but not much. I'll just let the bag stretch around. The whole thing is maybe a quarter inch high, and the biggest feature is the vacuum plate. I'm going to try and make sure that everything is stuck down nicely and don't have any leaks around the edge. And to come back once it's sucked down and find all the leaks by listening and by looking at the, the way the bag is pushed right in against the tacky tape. Sometimes you can see leaks better than you can hear them. 
and I'll cut off these flaps just to make sure they don't flop around in the oven. They'll be good to cook. I'm going to let this sit for about an hour before I cook it. Um, ideally it would be longer, but it's good. just a test here. So, got a thermocouple, vacuum down around 18. I think it got a bit lower during the cook. Um, and here I am cooking. I've blurred out my sketchy heat controller. Don't do that. Don't be like me. And here is my cook log. It's just got time, temperature, and vacuum. Now I'm going to demold this guy. And I'm, gonna, I'm really shy here because I always get a shock when you pull carbon table carbon off of a carbon table. That's up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get one. I always get a shock doing this. It's just a matter of time. There's a lot of static electricity generated, and uh, it always gets you. So pulling it off, it looks pretty nice. Uh, definitely some pinholes in it. Pretty lightweight. But it feels like it's all stuck together. So you can see the surface is not great. It's not terrible. There's just not enough resin to go around. And it would be neat to see if the top or bo the bottom skin is significantly better bonded than the top skin. But you can see there's the foam. I just busted off to have a look. And here is my breaking test. Cut about a 25 millimeter wide strip. And you can see how it fails there. And the core seems to be less stuck to the top skin than to the bottom skin, which makes sense. And I'll break it again. It's not very robust stuff, but it's better than I thought it would be. And given how light it is, you can't expect much. But it does look like it's glued okay. Um, nowhere near as good as it would be with glue film, uh, film adhesive, but there's no additional weight. And it ended up really light, uh, 80 grams two and three quarter ounces for the one square foot panel and it would certainly be useful for something very light it's just fun to see how this stuff works and what it weighs thanks for checking out the explore composites materials library see you next time